Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, I want to show you guys how we can use Windows Firewall in Wazoo's active response to dynamically block traffic to known malicious IP addresses. There are a few requirements for this video. You do need to be on Wazoo Manager and Agent version 4.2 or above to take advantage of the active response capabilities that we're going to use in this video. You will need PowerShell 7 so that we can parse through the JSON that we get as a response back from our Wazoo manager as part of the active response process. And Sysmon is not required, but it is recommended. Sysmon events are going to be events that I manually trigger in this video to actually kick off this integration. And outside of that, just gives you much more telemetry into what's going on onto your Windows event. So it's not required for this video, but it is, uh, but it is recommended, and it can be downloaded at the link that you see on the screen there. So uh, some of the steps for today's video, we are going to create our active response script. Uh, we are going to is going to be a PowerShell script that we are going to invoke that will make an entry within our local Windows firewall that's on our endpoint. And we're going to get more into that in a bit. We are then going to manually trigger an event. So the flow of what's going to happen is a log entry will be made in our Sysmon event viewer that will be collected by our Wazoo agent and sent to our manager. Our manager will then make an API request to MISP and say, hey MISP, do you contain a entry for this IP address? And if you do, then that is going to invoke our active response script. So our manager is then going to tell our agent, hey, I want you to run the PowerShell script with this given IP address that we know is malicious. And we'll get into more of that here in a bit as well. And then we'll be able to observe the traffic that is being blocked by looking at rules within our Windows firewall. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So I've also put the put the steps on the Medium blog post and I'm going to be following along with that uh, throughout this video. So if you guys are looking to follow along, I'll link that in the description of the video as well. Um, a so previously, right, we've done something similar like this, but this was on Linux boxes, right? We haven't actually incorporated that to our Windows endpoint. So that is exactly what this video is, is going to, to cover. If you want to install Sysmon on your own endpoint, you can follow along with this video to, to go ahead and do so. But let's go ahead and deploy our script. So, so this will command of two scripts. Our, we'll have our bulk PowerShell script that is going to do most of the heavy lifting. And then we also have our batch script that will invoke with PowerShell 7 our, active, our actual active response PowerShell box. So let me actually open these up in the GitHub. So here is our batch script that we'll use. Again, we're just invoking PowerShell 7 to run our, our Windows Firewall.ps1 script, which is the name of the actual PowerShell script that's going to be doing the heavy lifting. Uh, if you wanna change this name to something of your own, just make sure you reflect that within your batch script uh, here, right? So that would be the only change you would need to make there. And then looking at the actual PowerShell script, let's go ahead and kind of step through it. Um, so again, with Wazoo's active response, the manager is actually going to send us back the JSON of the full alert. So with that JSON, what we'll be able to do is strip out our particular fields and assign it to an IP address. And that's exactly what I'm doing with our destination IP variable here. So here we are stripping out the value that's in the field data.misp.values because when this script, script runs, the IP address that we want to add to our Windows firewall rule will be the value that's contained within our data.misp.value. And, and if we look at one of our previous uh, MISP alerts, right, we see that here, we see our data.misp.value. So our script will make a Windows firewall rule for this, for whatever value is within this data.misp.value. And uh, since this is a Windows firewall, since we're gonna be interacting with the Windows firewall, this will of course need to be an IP address. 
right? So if you want to use this script for something, you know, other than uh, MIST, maybe you have some other threat intelligence feed, uh, you can always just change the field to match whatever you would see within Kibana, right? So you could, you could use this script for other alerts that come in. You would just need to change your field uh, appropriately. So we're getting this value and then signing it to our variable of destination IP. We are then going to make our new Windows firewall entry. And what we're first going to do is we're going to run an if statement and make sure that the destination IP, so the value that we're actually going to block, is not a local host, so it's not itself, so that we don't uh, accidentally quarantine the box for some reason, right? We don't want to negatively impact um, regular activity on that's going on on this endpoint right and then we also want to make sure it doesn't block itself so we're also saying it's not equal to this host ip variable which we're running this command here to get the ip address of the host itself right so we make sure it doesn't it doesn't quarantine itself with this uh if statement here and then uh, assuming that the ip address that we're going to block is not is, doesn't match any of these conditions then we run our firewall drop so we go ahead and run our new dash net firewall rule action which is built into powershell and allows us to interact and and create new firewall rules from powershell so we're then giving it a display name of wazoo active response so when we actually load our firewall our windows firewall it's clear to us okay these are the ip addresses that wazoo's active response ran so we're just setting a description there you can of course change that to your liking if you'd like the direction is going to be outbound you could also set this to to inbound if you'd like as well so traffic couldn't come or go from the ip address that triggered the alert our our port is set to any so meaning any port uh you could change that as well protocol is also set to any you can change that and then our action is set to block because we want our rule to block this traffic and then the remote address is where we then assign our destination ip right so that'll be our value that is stripped out within our data.mist.value right so that'll be the ip address that'll be stripped out there so this script will be able to be reused time and time again and we'll just sub out our destination ip variable uh just like that so that looks good this block here is responsible for adding the destination IP to the Windows firewall. And then this block here is responsible for moving the des uh, removing the destination IP from the Windows firewall if you have the uh, timeout setting set within Wazoo. And we'll look at that here in a sec as well. But uh, in our remove section, we're just doing the inverse essentially, right? So instead of new dash net firewall, we're saying remove dash net firewall. All you have to specify is the display name, which is our Wazoo active response, and then dash uh, the value of the IP address. Right, so that's looking good. So it's not too complex, it's pretty simple, uh, but it is pretty powerful. Uh so on my endpoint here, I'm just gonna open a notepad and let me copy the contents of the batch script first. Um, if you are following along, I would recommend uh, viewing the raw content so that uh, any encoding or anything, any weird encoding or anything doesn't screw up your copy and paste. So I always like to grab the raw. Uh, so we hopefully don't run into that, uh, run into that issue. So I'll paste that there and I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'm going to save this in my uh, program files, OSEC agent, active response slash bin directory. Uh, so you will need to make sure you put it there. I'm going to go ahead and change that back to all files and I'm going to give it the name of firewall.cmd. So go ahead and copy that value and paste that there. And now let's do the same for our, our PowerShell script. Uh, the last thing I will note that I did skip over is we're going to echo out to our active response.log file. So we'll be able to see, okay, when, when was this active response ran? And the contents that we're gonna echo is going to be, again, the value of the destination IP, and then just the uh, static string of added to block list via Windows firewall. So let's go ahead and copy this guy. I'll go ahead and paste the contents in there 
And let me go ahead and save this. Uh, again, in my program files, OSEC agent, active response, and bin directory. And I'm going to go ahead and call this, what did we call this? Windows firewall.ps1. Go ahead and copy that. And paste that there. Okay. All right. So now let's, uh, so now let's configure our Wazoo manager to uh, run, like when do we want this active response script to run, right? So, so if we scroll down here, uh, right, this is going to happen when miss responds with a positive hit, right? So we've already set up that integration, so I'm not gonna cover it in this video, but I do link to the post here. Uh, if you're interested in configuring Wazoo and MISP uh, for yourself within your own environment, you can follow this post here. Uh, that will that will help you do that. So, uh, but for this video, I'm gonna assume that that is already done. So then we scroll down, let's go ahead and tell, okay, so when do we then tell our Wazoo manager, when do we want you to invoke this active response script? Well, in our case, we want it to invoke after it's made the call out to miss and miss responds with, hey, I have an IOC, I have an indicator of compromise for that value that you asked me about, right? So that is when we want our active response script to run, which will be on, in my case, it'll be rule ID 100,622, where if we look, at that rule ID on my end, that's the rule ID that I have set for when MISP comes back with a positive hit, right? So that is when the Wazoo manager will run the active response is when it sees this rule ID 100,622. So I'm going to step into my configuration of my Wazoo manager and I'm just going to scroll down here and let me find the active response block. So I found our active response blocks there and let me go ahead and copy and paste this guy in. All right, so we're invoking our, so we're just giving it a name of Windows Firewall. This can be whatever name you want, but then you see our executable and our executable that we're calling is our batch file, right? So our firewall.cmd. Where if we go back to our endpoint here, that is this guy here, which again, right, just invokes our PowerShell, our Windows Firewall PowerShell script. So uh, if you name this differently, of course, that would need to be reflected here. So this will be the executable that we'll, we're going to run, which will then invoke our PowerShell script. Our timeout allowed is set to yes. So again, that correlates back to, okay, when after a certain amount of time, let's go ahead and remove that firewall rule. Um, so you can set that to yes. You can also set this to no. If you want that to be a indefinite block, you can set that to no uh, to do so there. We then step into our active response block here. Uh, and disabled is set to no. That's pretty self-explanatory. Our command that we're going to run. So what, what are we going to run? That's going to be our Windows firewall. And that's going to run our firewall.cmd executable. Uh, the location, local, well, it just means that this is going to run on the agent that triggered the alert. And here we have our rule ID. So when does this integration run? Well, when, when will our active response run? Well, it'll run when we see, when we, when our Wazoo manager sees the rule ID 100,622, which correlates to my miss positive hit. This will probably be different within your environment. So you'll just need to change that to whatever rule ID you have set to the miss positive hit. And then our timeout set to 60. Uh, this is in seconds. So after one minute, the Wazoo manager will remove that firewall entry for us automatically. Uh, so it'll, it'll invoke our PowerShell script again, right? But now instead of running, instead of running the add destination IP, it'll add the remove destination IP and remove it from our firewall rule. So let's go ahead and save, and then we will restart our manager. Let's go ahead and find us an attribute that uh, we know will trigger a positive hit. So uh, I'm just going to go to domains and uh, I'll just copy this guy here. So this guy should give us a positive hit. So on my endpoint here, let me go ahead and open up a command prompt. Yeah, here we go. Let me go ahead and copy this so we can run this, which will invoke a network connection. Uh, and then here, I'll just change the IP address to the domain that I copied within MISP. Uh, so I'll paste that there. 
And then let me jump back to MISP and copy this. So this should make a network connection out to this domain, which of course uh, DNS, DNS will happen. It'll resolve it to an IP address and then that'll and then that'll correlate to a network connection being made, right? Which will trigger our MISP integration, which MISP, MISP should then respond with a positive hit and then that will block our IP address. So let's go ahead and run it. So let's go ahead and pop back into our discovery let's go ahead and see this kicking off here all right so here we see our uh network connection being made and that uh vero verofest.com resolved to this destination ip address misp then responded with the positive right so our sysmon event three our data dot miss that value we see that value here and now if we go to our windows firewall and if we refresh, we now see our Windows Active Response has triggered, right? And now if I do this quickly enough before the minute has gone up, if I try to, let's say, ping, uh, I probably missed it by now, but let's see, 139.60.161.4.0. No, we're still failing, right? So good, I still caught it within the minute. And if we go ahead and refresh it after a minute, uh, we can see that our firewall rule is no longer there. And I can now ping this address again. So let's try it again and let's see how quickly it goes in real time. So I'll invoke my command again. And once this comes back to us, we should see our firewall rule be added for us automatically. And then I'll, and then just as, and then since that's blocking all network traffic, right? Even a ping won't be won't be allowed. And here you can see it's been added for us already. So once this guy comes back to us, there we go. Now if I try to ping that guy, we get a failure, right? So now no network connection can be made to this host at all. And if I try to invoke the same thing, you see how fast it comes back just because it's not able to, to actually get there. But I'm still able to go to other uh, to other destinations, right? Like if I try to ping Google, for example, right? I can still I can still hit that. But what we've done now is actively blocked our malicious IP, right? That was contained uh, within MISP, right? So we see this guy here, Wazoo's made our call out to MISP and said, and MISP said, "Yep, I got an entry for that." So Wazoo said, "Okay, let's go ahead and run our active response script to." create a firewall rule on our local firewall that will stop any traffic out there. So that buys your security team some time so you can now investigate, okay, what what user or what software got onto this box that even tried to invoke network connection out to this known malicious IP address, right? So something is still, so it's obvious that something nefarious may be going is going on on this endpoint however we've stopped any further actions from, from being able to, to be executed by now blocking all network traffic out to maybe this is their command and control server for example right so we've now we've now stopped the attacker in their tracks before they got some more maybe serious malware on onto your box or whatever their kind of end goal end goal is uh, yeah, so I think that wraps it up for today's video. Uh, again, everything will be on, everything's on the Medium post as well, which will be in the description below. But I think that wraps it up for today's video. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me, and I will see you in the next one.